Hello, this is Mark Turn. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to create an Instagram double exposure effect. I saw this on a video on YouTube, but this is made with PixArt, so I decided to take this into Photoshop and show you guys how to do it. But I am not going to be using every item I see on the previous video or the same process I will be going through. You know, the process of pixel art is different from the process in Photoshop. So, we're going to follow it and let's get started. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial, make sure to check the link in the description to get every image used in this video. <clears throat> so first thing I want to do, I want to erase the background from this picture. You can use any method of your choice. For me, my favorite is the paint tool, and I'm just going to use the paint tool to do that. You can make use of the quick selection tool or any other tool of your choice, but mine is the paint tool. So I'm just going to hit P on my keyboard to grab the paint tool and zoom in. And I'm just going to speed through this, and when I'm done over to the next step. use the pen to, to make your selection after making your path around your subject what you want to do right click and hit on make selection that is when you make your first part selection but if you're making for the second one just hold on I'll show you what to do but if you're making for the first part selection you right click make selection and you put in 0 0.5 because that it's the default to keep the edge soft and so on but i set mine to zero because i will be making use of the select and mask method to do that so once you've put in 0 0.5 now go ahead and click on ok now if you have made the first selection and you're making the second one click when you right click and um you go to it make selection and hit on new selection it will automatically delete the previous selection you make and make a new selection for you so i'm going to hit command z on my keyboard and now i'll right click again and i will go to make selection and this time you want to hit on subtract from selection why subtract from selection i'm going to tell you that now if you make use of the add to selection you won't get any selection because the whole model is already selected and the next place you want to make a selection of it's part of the selection you want you make 
if i click on what add to selection and i hit ok you see that what nothing happened because that part is already selected but if i go back and i do this if i go back and i make the same process and i hit make selection and i go to what subtract from selection and i click ok you see that what it has subtract that part from the whole selection that i make so don't get confused between the add selection and the subtract from selection so now that i've done this i'm going to hit w on my keyboard to select the quick selection tool and i'll hit on the select and mask i really don't want to do much in here but i just prefer to make use of this method to do this so what i'm going to do i will come down to the feather radius to the feather and i'll put in 0 0.5 which I'm supposed to put at the previous part 0 0.5 and I will go down to the contrast and just add in 1 into the contrast and I will scroll down to the word outputs output settings I'll come down to the output to a new layer with layer mask and I'm going to hit OK I select that and hit OK now I'm going to get my subject on a separate layer with the previous one with the previous layer where the main subject and the background are together and the new layer where I have my layer mask and the subject separate so when I click when I hold down what option on my keyboard it's going to bring back the one below with the background and with the option being hold down again and I click it's going to reveal that one all right so what you want to do you want to take this into the background which you want to put this in okay so for me I have already created a new document which I want to place this in but before I place this into the new document what I'm going to do I'll go in over to the new document we'll just quickly go into my finder just right here we'll go into my finder and I will go down to that part and I will go into right here double click on that stock photos and um studio background studio background three i really don't know the one that i really want to make use of but let just go ahead and check so let me try to increase this i'm new to mark so don't really really blame me if i'm a little bit laggy with the selections and so on okay so i'll check this so this is what i will be using and i'll click and drag it into this part now I'm going to resize to fit in my canvas so I'll take this up a bit or uh, just release that key and make the selection just how this is a little bit too big than what I'm expecting so I'm gonna keep it to something like this something like this is okay and I'll hit on this to check that now I'm going to hit on command 0 to zoom in. Now it's time for me to import my subject. So I will go back to where I have the subject, which is right here. And with a move to, I'll click and drag into that part and I will drop it right here. And if this is too big, you know exactly what to do. Hit on command, or hit on command T on your keyboard to transform. So I'm just going to take this down, down to something there. Hold on, option to transform from the middle. And when you're done, hit on enter and command zero to zoom in. Now, okay, I have this placed on my image, on my document, but this is kind of like, okay, and that's pretty cool. Just exactly what I want or where I want it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit on command C on my keyboard. Now right click and hit on flip horizontal because I want this I want the subject to look as if he's looking at the bed, which I really know it's a full-time fantasy. So once I'm done with this, I'm gonna hit on enter on my keyboard so I can move this to something like this. This is okay, but now the point here is this the color of the background is not matching with the subject, right? So how we do that we have to uh, balance the color first before we proceed so for this method i'll be making use of 
the color balance and i will put that on a separate layer so that if anything goes wrong i can just quickly delete the layer so i'll come down to the new adjustment of solid layer and i will go into the color balance right here i will just play with the mid tones so we have a little bit of that reddish look on this background so i will try to what have the reddish look on our model you can play around with the values any way you want it to be but i'm going to play around with my own values based on the background and the kind of picture that i have so i'm going to take the red up a little bit and make sure as you can see this is what affecting everything including the what the the model and the background but i want this to affect only the model so what i'm going to do i'm going to set this to what a clipping mask i'm going to create a clipping mask to clip only the model layer so whatever i do it's going to affect only the model so right now i will come down to this cyan and i'll play around with this add a little bit of red to the model which is cool add more of that something like that so i'll play with the magenta and make it a little bit cool because i have a little bit of a magenta around the right bottom of this part but not really that much so just keep it cool like this and add a little just reduce the red a little bit so now we'll add a little bit of yellow to make it warm okay just something like this it's okay this is okay for me so you can quickly cycle through between the before and the after so this is what we're having before and this is what we're having after so once you've done go ahead and close this window because you don't need it anymore so right now the next thing for me to do i will select both layers because i don't want to get my workspace messy so what i'm going to do i'll select both layers and i'll right click and go down to what merge layers which is command e on your keyboard as the shortcut so now the next thing to do i'm going to import my picture which i want to place inside the model so here i have it as the word the mountain so come down click once and unlock it from the background then click remove to click and drag and drop it onto your what the model or your workspace so i'm going to zoom out a bit and drag this up to fill the model just like that now what i want to do i'm going to hold on command and click on the mo on the thumbnail of the model layer to quickly make a selection because i don't want to go around and start making a selection again i'll make a selection of that and now i'm going to add a layer mask to the what the mountain layer now this is what i do hold on command and click on the thumbnail of the what the model layer to make a selection and now i am going to select the mountain which is right here so I'll just quickly rename that so that you don't get confused all right and if i got the spelling wrong you mean i don't know so i'm going to name this to that is just i'm going to name this to model all right and name that to model so and this i'm going to name this to to the background right so now this is where we're right so with the mountain layer selected i'll come down to the, uh, the icon at the bottom which says add a layer mask and i'll click and add a layer mask to give me the shape of the model now it is filling the word uh, the model so now this the layer of the mountain we want to set the blend mode to what uh, lighting if i'm correct which is right here so that we can see through of the word uh, the model can just see a little bit of it don't worry about the other parts that are not showing it's not really your concern for the main time but we just have to what see of all this what part of the hand which are very very what important so the next thing you want to do hold on the word option key on your keyboard and click on the model layer and drag it up above the mountain layer to create a duplicate of the model so that what we'll be able to what have the head that has been taken away because what we need right now is just the head and not fully part of all this side because we can see a little bit of this side so we just need from the head and over to all this part so we're going to reveal that reveal that layer and this time set the blend mode to hard light okay so now this is what we have and this is a little bit lighter than 
what we're supposed to be getting but now this is what really really cool for what we need but now it's totally covering it's totally covering the what the mountain layer or the mountain itself but we don't want that right we just need some part of the what the cloth or of the model on that mountain and most part mostly we need the mountain fully of that part so what you want to do add a layer marks to the model layer hold on the odd no don't hold on anything my bad just add a layer marks to the layer and then grab the brush too and right click on any part of your workspace and select a brush with the word i'm going to be using the soft run pressure opacity but if you're not making use of a digital tablet you can go and what select the run brush and when you select the run brush you want to decrease the flow and the opacity you might take down the flow to something like 20 or less and the opacity you can leave the opacity to 50 it all depends on what you want your splat on with those settings and see what you get but if you're making use of a tablet you can still go and play with your settings it all depends on what you want but i'm going to leave mine at 50 50 50 percent opacity and 50 percent flow now with my foreground color set to black and my layer marks selected i'm going to paint along the area which i want to take away the cloth so i'm just going to paint over this place yes something like this it's really really going to be okay all right so now i can zoom out and see what we have here now this is really fair and better so if i go to the layer part and i hold on shift on my keyboard and click on the layer marks you can see that i can disable the layer marks again if i hold on shift and click again i can enable the layer marks now after adding the next layer which is this top layer to this we find out that it's a little bit lighter than the background but right? we have to uh, fix that but before we do that let's go around and see what we can do or observe our image and see the kind of modification we are going to make to this image or to our double exposure effect before we proceed to the next step now look at this when you look at the i'm just gonna hit v to select my move so when you look at the other part of it you can see that what below all this part or below the background it's a little bit dark and we're not supposed to be having a lighter color of our model on all these parts it's not really making any sense so first what i'm going to do i'm going to make the model a little bit bigger so i'm going to select the top layer and hold on shift and select the bottom layer then hit on command t on my keyboard and word transform and if you're making use of 2018 below you want to hold on shift on your keyboard but if you're making use of the 2019 version or the 2019 you just want to word transform just like that so just I'm going to set this this way and hit on enter on my keyboard so now when i zoom in a little bit you can see that we have a little bit of all these whites at the on the hair and some other part which are really really not supposed to be there so we need to fix all this stuff but before we fix all this stuff we need to add a level adjustment to this picture so that i give it a little bit of dark balance so that it's match with our background a little bit so to do that we're going to come down create a new level adjustment but this time we are not going to make any modification in the properties panel of these levels what we are going to do we are just going to head over to the blend mode and set the blend mode to multiply why because multiply darkens All right so what we want this we want this to just affect only the word the model the model layer so to do this we select this layer and select this layer then we'll right click or we can just drag this down to the group and what it's going to create a new group for us then i'm really going to double click on that and rename it to what model once more just sorry about that model and hit on enter so now i'm going to right click 
on the level adjustment we just created and set it to a create clipping mask now it's going to clip only the model layer so now you can just reduce the opacity to something that you like so i'm going to take the opacity down to something about let's say 60 60 is okay so this is practically the before and this is the after what we've got now we're having a lot of balance on this image but that it's not really that it's not really that much so let's take this down a bit to something like so okay so now this is really okay for me that is you can do it do this any way you want but for me this is really really okay so i'm just going to bring this down a bit to the bottom part all right so now let's try to balance the bottom part before we do anything before we work on the face and other part of the model so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new layer above the world the model and the level adjustment we just created and i'll select the gradient too and make sure that the foreground color is set to black or oh, don't really worry about that if a foreground color is not set to black so i will go to the word this rectangle that i have there and click on the bottom to open up click on the bottom to open up the word the gradient editor so i will select from the word the preset i'm going to select from black to transparent now from the color stop sliders that i have here i'll come down to this part i'll select that color stop and i'm going to hit on delete because i want absolutely black so once i'm done with that i will just hit on ok now make sure that the linear gradient is selected right here now with the gradient to go to the bottom of your workspace and you hold down shift and you click and you drag just like that now it's going to give you something like this all right so what you're going to do create set that as a clipping mask by holding down option and put your mouse cursor between the word between the below layer and the top layer you're going to get this little square and the arrow which signify a clipping mask or you can make use of the word command option g to create a clipping mask so you can do that but i'm just going to make use of this method to create a clipping mask now it's affecting only the model but it's totally dark from what we have as the main background so we're going to reduce the opacity just to something like this which is really okay to me but you can add a little bit of more depth to it it all depends on what you want so now we are getting close on what blending the below part of our image but it's not really that much so we just what we need to do we need to pick some colors from all this part and here then we will and we're going to dab it on our model so what to do now i'm going to zoom in a little bit just to this level and i'm going to create a new layer above and hit the b key on my keyboard to select the brush too and i'm going to right click with the same brush which is the soft round project or park state brush that i used before that is what i'm still going to use now and every settings are going to remain the same but you can change the size or decrease the size but you can still play around with your own settings because when i press hard it's going to give me something thick on my workspace that if i press hard on my table it's going to give me something thick and if i press light it's going to give me something light so with a new layer selected i'm going to hold on the word the option key on my keyboard which is right here and i'm just going to uh, pin a little bit over here just like so all right so i'll come back come down to this part hold on option key and select and i'm just going to pin around all this part so this is a little bit getting out of what we are expecting so i'm just gonna take this back you want to take out your time to work on this don't just try to do that so, this is pretty cool don't make sure not to wipe out everything so this is okay so i can zoom out and see what we have this is working well for us and this is not really working that well so i'm just going to do repeat that same and put that process again at the bottom yes something like that let me zoom in closely so that you can see yes and select this 
and um, so I'm gonna zoom out all right and this is better for what we can use so now let's go ahead and fix out every other part of our image so right now we have a lot of light on this part of the face so how we're gonna fix that we just have to uh, create a light rays right now so what you're going to do to create that light rays hit the p key on your keyboard to select your pen tool and create a new layer above now with the pen tool make a rays of light on your image so i'm going to start from this part i'll take it down to this part just like that and i'll come down to this part and hit here just like that don't worry about it because you can adjust that so i'm going to make use of the command key on my keyboard and click there and i can move and adjust this to give me what i want just something like that and if you're not really okay with that you can zoom out and or you can zoom in sorry to say and hold down the command key and you can just drag this to make it a little bit bigger and with the command key click on that little square you have there or the anchor point and you can adjust that to give you exactly what you want so now I'm done with that so what you're going to do on that new layer you created with the part you just make right click and go down to what few part not make selection this time around but you can still do the make selection and what so on it all depends on you so I'll go to select the few part and this time I forgot the word to set my foreground color to white but that doesn't really matter so I'm going to click on this drop down menu and hit on what color from that part it's going to open up my color picker and I will move this up and hit on OK to create a color or to select a color so once I'm done with that I'm going to hit on OK and it's going to fill that part with my the white color that I just selected so right now I'm going to right click on this I'm going to right click and come down and hit on what delete part because we are done with the word this so I'll go to filter and I'll go to blur and I will go down to a to Gaussian blur and I think the 88.4 8 is really okay for me but you can play around with that to give you exactly what you want but the 88.4 8 is okay with me so I'm just gonna set that to 88 8 and leave the point 4 but now we are not get we lost a lot of details on the word light so we need to see those waves so what you're going to do here on command J on your keyboard to uh, make a duplicate of that layer right so on that layer before I make do that I'll hit on word command Z to go back and I'll just play around with the blend mode I can play with screen lighter colors overlay and see what I'm going to uh, to get and nothing is really really happening right here so I'm just going to set that to uh, lighting and uh, I can just hit on command J to make a duplicate of that now select both layers by holding down command on your keyboard and I'll just reduce the opacity just like that so now it's a little bit okay and giving us what we want so I'm going to hit on command G with both layers selected to group them and I'm going to double click on there and I'm just going to name that light now if the light if you think the light is really too much on the face of your model it's pretty simple you can what fix that like all this part the light is not really supposed to be there so i'm going to add a mask to the group and here the b key on my keyboard and make use of the bracket key the bracket keys to what increase and decrease the size of the brush and with the what the foreground color sets black and opacity 50 flow 50 and there's raise a little bit of that because the light part is really affecting the hair and the other parts of the stuff so now we have some lights on the other parts of the model which are not really really okay but for here we have these lights reflecting here it's a little bit okay we can keep that but for here we really don't have that much so let's go back into the model layer and let's fix that so let's create new layer above the model layer and let's set that to a clipping mask hold on option on your keyboard and click blue to create a clipping mask so i'm going to zoom in just like that with a brush too i'm going to sample a color from all this part and 
I'm just going to paint this part just there. And as you keep going, sample from the places you are currently working in. So sample from there. And I'm going to sample a little bit of black and apply it to this part so that it's going to kill out the color. Command Z. And it's going to paint a little bit in this part of the neck. Just a little bit, this part of just like that. So the light should be affecting only the front part of the face. So you can zoom out and see what you've done. And this is a little bit balanced but right here we don't need that light it's pretty too much so let's just let me just decrease that a bit so more on that more 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 on that so this is okay to so what we want that is like really okay so now what we're going to do we're going to repeat the same process on this part and just paint that in a little bit like this and paint just like that so hit on word command zero and zoom up so this is where we've been having so far what we've done with our work so now let's see the next step which we want to do okay so we have a little bit of balance let's zoom in we have a little bit of balance and everything on our picture model blending in with the background and it's pretty okay even though we know it's fantasy but it's still blending in but look at this we have a little bit of white for zoom out we have a little bit of white at the back side of our model so when we zoom in let's see if we can get those white so it's not really there but let's zoom out again and when you zoom out the white is there and the white is not there so we're just going to what keep that and hit on command zero to what zoom in. okay so now that we have most of every part fixed but we still need to what, add a little bit of dark to some part of the face so right now I'm going to come down and go to curves because I want to darken some part of the face like all this side because the light is not really supposed to be hitting all this part very well so I'm just going to drag the curve down totally just like that and I'll close that. Then with the layer mask selected, I'm going to hit on option plus backspace to fill in with black to take away the, word, the effect I just created because I just want it to be on some place. I don't want to erase it from some place. So with the brush tool, you can play around with this, but this time I'm going to set the flow to 20% and the opacity down to 30%. So with the same pressure, sub pressure, sub front pressure epoxy brush, which is right here, which is a sub front pressure epoxy brush, and I will just easily and my foreground color sets white because I want to review and I'm not erasing. So I'm just going to paint lightly on all this part Even here, just like. So this part needs to be dark a little bit, just a little, not much of it. So let's take this out and let's zoom out and let's see what we've done so far. So here is the before and here is the after. You see how we've taken the whole light effect down of that part. Here is the before and here is the after. So we can just add a little bit of this part. So we don't want this much, this part, so let's raise this. Okay, this is pretty okay. So here's the before and here is the after. Here's the before and here is the after. Now the lights, we still have the lights too much. So let's check on there is we have it on 68 and 68. But light is still too much on the face. So let's reduce the opacity a little bit and hit on command T on our keyboard. Now we'll move this upward. A little bit to take it away from the face just like so okay this is you can make use of the arrow keys on your keyboard to do that now this is pretty okay for me and I think this is really really exactly what I want this to be but right now this part of this um, 
of our mountain it's really really dark so below the mount below the model layer at the top i'm just trying to see if i'll play around with some levels adjustment and i'm going to lighten this up a little bit of just the mountain so i'm going to recreate a mask with that and i'm just going to lighten that add a little bit of light effect to that i guess this is okay so here's the before here is the after and it adds a whole lot of depth to that so let's just reduce this a bit and it's really okay so here's the before here is the after the before and the after the before and the after now the light is affecting this part of the face don't worry about that we're going to fix that with the what the brush too so set select the layer mask and set your foreground color to black and you can plan on with the settings but i'm just going to leave mine and i'm going to erase the spider that i don't want pressing hard on my tablet so this is okay just like so, so let's see here's the before and here's the after we still have some few stuff on this part of the face and now i can just increase this something like so this is 60 just like that so now i can erase very well just like so, so i'm gonna press hard very well all right so here's the before here's the after before and the after so this is where we're pretty this is the level we've gone so far so good kind of a like a fantasy double exposure so now looking at the world looking at the background it's kind of like a little bit faded right so we just have to work, make this model layer faded as well so we're going to close this layer we're going to close that group select everything and we're going to group them all again and we're just going to name these um just main main image all right now we are going to uh, go down to the uh, new adjustment layer and we're going to go to the brightness and the contrast just a little bit of that so we're going to reduce the contrast a little bit and we're going to set this to a layer mask so you can take it down to see what you're going to get so this is what you're going to get and so, so we're going to reduce this by something like this which is really okay just like so and then so we can quickly cycle through between the before and the after nothing really much happened so we can just take this down a bit again which is something like so we can quickly see the before and after now we're going to balance this and the camera raw filter so i'm going to close this select these two layer just this and this just select and uh see so i'm going to right click and convert them into a what a smart object then i will go into filter and i will go to what camera raw filter and that is going to open up so right now i'm just going to uh, reduce the contrast from this part of it and i'll take the shadow increase the shadows a little bit just like so but don't worry if you make anything destructive we can really we can what uh, fix that because we said the word layer into a word a smart object so i'm going to reduce the clarity because it's really really sharp i don't want that and i'll go into the detail tab and i'll increase the luminance because the background we're working on is really soft so we just need to make this one a little bit softer so i'm going to hit on ok and let's see what we've got all right so this is what we've got so far so now we have something a little bit destructive that's not really cool right it's kind of like it's really blood out just like that so we're going to double click on the camera raw filter and add up a little bit of contrast and take up the clarity a little bit and go down to the, uh, the detail tab and reduce luminance and take this down and we're going to hit ok again that is going to be it on how you can make the instagram exposure effect so if you like this video just 
make sure to hit the like button comment subscribe to stay tuned and get updates and videos whenever i post a new video so i hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys in my next video or my next class have a nice day